When we first came to Alexandria, we already knew a number of people uh, on Lee Street, South Lee Street, uh, or at least knew uh, them from a previous experiences. And so therefore, right away, we knew that we wanted to live on South Lee Street. <laughs> uh, and so therefore, that's, we worked to, we rented a house, that was a house that came up for rent, and uh, we lived there, and the first option, and it was in the, this is a long time ago, so it was a very, it seemed very reasonably priced. And uh, when it came up, we, we bought it, and therefore had lived there for, until our children were, we had two children and we needed to move to something larger. Welcoming, uh, vibrant, um, intellectually stimulating, all these things in the neighbors that we knew and the new ones that we met. Uh, they started at, it was in the era of, of uh, integration, and so they started at, uh, um, at uh, not Lyles Crouch, but Mor Maury Elementary School, and then uh, were bused back to Lyles Crouch, which is within two blocks walking distance. And so we experienced that effort, and people in the neighborhood made the effort to sort of make that all work. That office was on the corner of Washington Street and Duke at that time. And right now, it's where Society Fair has the restaurant. So they, Time Life, owned these floor, for the four floors up, the floors above it. And uh, I was at a point where the, both children were in school, and it was right in the neighborhood. I could walk to work so that our son could go to preschool, and I could spend the day and have someone come in the afternoon after preschool was out. Uh, and then as time went on, I was able to pick him up uh, to be there myself. I was aware that they had moved that to that location, and I simply went up and I had been in music, and I went and interviewed with the person who was in charge of the music division, doing choosing the records and all of that sort of thing, and. Uh, and was accepted and worked there for a number of years. And I'm remembering that Jerry Simons, I think was his name, saying, and this I'm saying for the young people that listen to this, is that he said, you know, at first having that responsibility is kind of onerous, but you get used to it. And I really understand what he meant, because if something is wrong, the buck stops right here, stops right here. So. It's a way to learn that, that all, many things in life are like that. You take responsibility for things, but you get used to it. You write things, you say things, you get used to it. The scholarship fund, uh, uh, there, I am someone who likes to level the playing field, is what I've concluded. I'm somebody who is very aware of differences and different opportunities. And so a number of us, we're aware that there were so many young people at the at the, Alex, uh, the Alexandria Public Schools at T.C. Williams, and our children also went to T.C. Williams, uh, who had the capability, but not the financial means to go on to continue their education. And so I literally went to Cleveland in Ohio, which is the founder of the whole um, uh, movement for having college access programs and financial support and out to Santa Barbara and looked at those programs and with a group of people uh, sort of got the thing going as far as becoming uh, what it is today. That is, and I became the second executive director and in my day there was $300,000 worth of scholarships given and today uh, we continue to go and support the scholarship fund. Today they gave out this last year over a million dollars in scholarships. Yes, and I was brought there to bring change because they were, I think, fifty, forty thousand dollars in debt or something. And um, that today wouldn't seem like a lot, but in a small organization, it is a lot. So I kind of was aware of <clears throat> of that challenge, but not had never really uh, been a change agent in the sense of trying to bring big change. 
And that was a challenge because that was resisted in some ways. And uh, I learned from it. I would, I'm a better change agent today than I was then. But the bottom line is we, we got rid of the debt and it was by having a wonderful gala, a fundraising gala, like the scholarship fund has had for years and uh, honored Patsy Tyser as the first honoree. And that event continues today and is just one of the many things that uh, provides funding for the senior services. What inspired me to go back uh, to uh, George Mason University is where I went, go, go, not back to, but went, go to George Mason University. Beca uh, I chose that because it had the kind of program I wanted, all the detail, all the separate classes uh, in management, in fundraising, uh, strategy, strategic planning, all these different things, and uh, came away with the ability to add those things to the next experience that I might have in a nonprofit. Interestingly, I didn't take a course in change. I'm not sure there was one, but there were enough things that sort of gave me the tools that uh, I would have been more effective bringing change. I live right near the old Presbyterian Meeting House, which is where the Tutoring Consortium is housed. And I learned via the grapevine that they were Gary Charles, who was the pastor at that time, was looking to start, because he had come from a location where they had had this, to start tutoring for children who were like in first, second grade, uh, to help them learn the reading skills they need in order to be able to read. And so I walked over, and when they were having a meeting, I found out when they were having a meeting, and sat down and <clears throat> said, I am just involved in the, uh, <clears throat> I'm involved in, I'm now in graduate school, adding a lot of skills to my toolbox. And uh, it sounds like uh, I could help you, for starters, get the nonprofit license. So yes, they said, oh, that would be great. And so I did that, we built it out, sent it in, did all those things, and then sort of set it up the next step. And when we had things in place, then I said, now I think it's a time for you to hire me as the executive director. <laughs> and they, they met and decided that was a good idea. And so, um, so I've, been, I've been that almost 10 years. I just retired uh, at the end of last August. Uh, I grew up in a family that were people who were involved in the community in Austin, Minnesota, small town. Um, my mother taught preschool in the church, and uh, her circle that many people can relate to from that era uh, had all sorts of service projects. And my father was somebody who uh, joined the, the Kiwanis and uh, was on boards of different groups in town, and so it was very clear to me that everyone was kind of giving back in some way, even though I'm saying that in retrospect. I'm not sure I was aware of that at the time. But my brother turned out to be a pastor. He went into the um, divinity school as a pastor, which has got to be one of the most giving of uh, professions. And um, so it just kind of, kind of was in the blood. And it seemed like a natural thing to do. Uh, and it started really with my realizing that there were uh, discrepancies between what some children are offered and what others are offered and how that plays out. And so when my first job after Carleton, I went to Carleton College and I went out to, uh, and I interviewed and got a job at the Wellesley Public Junior High School. That's where Wellesley College is, but it's at the local public junior high school. And, and in those days, they literally called, they, they, they organized children by their academic ability. So there were classes called slow learners. How do you think that made them feel? Anyway, so right starting there, I just said, okay, so these people who are in that category obviously have less opportunities than the others, so we're going to go in to see Fantasia, and we're going to go in to see the opera, and we're going to do some of these extra things that will fill out their experiences to um, give them that background as well. You see the scholarship fund is that same thing. This whole idea of trying to uh, eliminate, um, uh, to expand opportunities to all children and young people. Because what is that? It's those, it's, there's no 
everyone can apply for scholarships. And uh, there's no, it has nothing to do with academic. There are some scholarships that are for high academic ability, but there are always other things as well. Uh, the people who helped found the tutoring consortium were Gary Charles, the pastor, who obviously realized in his former city that there were kids who needed tutoring. And so when he came to the meeting house, he began that effort. And because he learned, we learned, he learned that Herb Berg, who is still lives in town part of the year, uh, his, his goal was to have all children reading and doing math on grade level. By the end, in those days, it was by the end of second grade. Today, the, 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 the measure is taken across the country at third grade. And the other person that was involved was Steve Rideout, who was the former uh, uh, justice of the juvenile court system. And he said, when this, the, the people who are in my courtroom, the young people who are in my courtroom are those who cannot read. And then he went, even went out to a, uh, uh, yeah, anyway, they, they are the ones that can't read. So what you're, what you're trying to do and others in the community to help kids learn to read is extremely important. So he was a huge backer. Uh, they are in the uh, schol uh, Scholars of Success that they highlight every year at the Scholarship Fund. And when you go to the gala, there are all these young people who are there, and some of them have been brought back, and they're now in occupations and teaching and doing all these things, and they tell their stories. So there are a lot of stories out there, um, uh, and that is a program that does help everyone in the community say, this did have an impact. Alexandria is a place where you know it's small enough, even though it's 160,000 people, it's small enough so that you know all the players. And I would say in the beginning, I didn't know all the players, but since I've, uh, the last years, certainly, when I've been, since I've been on the scholarship fund, the tutoring consortium, but also since I joined the Children, Youth, and Family Collaborative Commission. The city has commissions for everything, including the tree canopy. And this one's goal is to have every child be successful in every area, including academics. And people are working on that. And I'm, uh, I am the monitoring and implementation chair. And so, I have come to see that this, uh, to this, that the city just is all working and supporting this, this plan for children, youth, and families, and that there's just lots of progress going on that I certainly wasn't aware of earlier, and I don't think they had the vehicle, the platform for doing it like they do now. And the, this has been four years. The commission was created four years ago by city council. I was appointed by city council to apply. And um, the work is getting done. And so we're seeing some significant uh, improvement in opportunities and health and cultural sensitivity and all of these things that are being worked on and it's drawing in large numbers of additional people to help implement this. So it's all, it's good, it's good. It's a, it's a place where you can make things happen. There's an old Buddhist saying uh, of the, when you light a fire, uh, it sometimes not only enlightens the people you're lighting it for, but yourself as well. And that is truly true in this case. I've worked with so many young people and children, but with adults, donors, uh, uh, board members, and every one of them is like a little spark, and I'm one of those sparks. And our goal has been to improve the lives of the children with their reading skills for the tutoring consortium, with their opportunity to go on to college, uh, for the scholarship fund, the, for many skills development at the Commission on Children, Youth, and Families. And I must say that I'm grateful to have had these opportunities and to be able to continue them. And I've enjoyed the journey.